than Texas, California, and Montana combined. Filled with vast open spaces, mountains, forests, and incredible wildlife. It's the entire reason we bought an RV in the first place. Before we can attempt to explore the very limited road accessible portion of Alaska, we still have to get there first. Looking at a map, you realize there's only about two or three routes to even drive to Alaska. The Alcan, or Alaska Highway, was constructed in World War II as a way to connect Alaska to the lower 48. And it's still the primary route to navigate through Canada's rural British Columbia and Yukon territories. A big part of the Alaska RV adventure is just making it up the 1700 mile route. I think that's it. Yeah, this is so level. Wanna, so level. This is the most level. Ugh. We're here. We're so hungry. Are we that was this bitch out or what? Like two extra hours. Yeah, slide out. I just wanted to show. This is what I wanted to show. show we had a what? couple. We had a couple casualties in the terrible construction. <laughs> You want some water? It's Pepper's second birthday. Good. Number two. Every July 29th, it happens. <gasps> Number two. <laughs> Every year. Could you tell we're having an ice cream parlor themed birthday? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to <gasps> you. Oh, Good yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, oh my gosh, she's like chowing it. <laughs> Good. Good. chose this way because you just you don't want to miss sites like this. I mean I know you can kind of go up the coastline there's the marine highway She's hot. but like you would miss things like this. One two three beaver. Sorry I need to stop and take a photo. Beaver. We picked up some jujubes and it was two Canadian dollars for this like smaller bag or it's three Canadian dollars for just like like three pound bag of jujubes for a dollar more. So the problem now is really three pounds of jujubes in the bag. This is nice. This is really nice sitting over in this seat. I hope that we see a whole lot more of that coming up in the future here. Doing all the currency conversions and liters to gallon. Um, we were, we were paying $4.30 US per gallon here in, where are we, Fort? Fort Nelson. Fort Nelson. Ooh. Sure, do that. Oh, I've seen that thing in people's YouTubes. 
What? That big red building. Oh, this is it. This is it. We're doing it. This isn't the thing. The thing's further. Look at all the RVs. Oh my gosh. This is not the main thing though. Oh, this is it. Boom, and just like that, we're at mile zero in Dawson Creek. Look at this sweet pea. Come on. Hi, Pepper. Let's Come go. On. Hey. Here's how ridiculous it looks. <laughs> you can picture it in front of this sign. We're literally on the side of the road. <laughs> With traffic coming by in the rain. <laughs> But we got it and it looks great. <laughs> we'll see you in Alaska. No, we'll see you in like an hour. Buzzer beater. Made it here. Oh. Got the buzzer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a sports analogy. I mean, Oh good, my favorite time to be on camera in my bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna go, you go. It's <laughs> Looking for the heart of the right now. Oh god, I just ran into a bench. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a I don't know why I was looking for a bench. Over there it is cooler. Here it is warmer. Over there. It is hotter, and that's the riveting content going on here at the end of the night. <gasps> Too hot. <laughs> Come back over here. Year, you know who Keep Your Daydream is and two months ago they posted a riddle of where they put their sign in this sign forest. Okay so we want to follow Keep Your Daydream's riddle to give ourselves something to do right now. <laughs> uh, Watson Lake sign forest riddle. Okay this is from their YouTube episode. Vesper has a population of 541. Look for the moose crossing and you're almost done. Nice rhyming guys. Just find Spring City before you frown. The KYD sign is just a little ways down. So let's go solve their riddle since we don't have a sign to put up here. I think there's something like 8 million signs here. <laughs> Should we have like a competition to see who can find it first? Yeah, Vesper KYD. Okay, but there's also a hint. Walking in circles looking for a clue. Find the buoy and put it above you. This place is massive, and if the road wasn't right here, you would, you could totally get lost in here. This is way bigger than I expected. I think my strategy is to just look for a buoy. One time we ran into Keep Your Daydream at a park in Phoenix, and uh, I don't actually watch any travel YouTube. I watch all movie YouTube, so I, I didn't know who you guys were. And Finny got very, very starstruck and tongue-tied when you guys walked over and introduced yourself. So if you ever see this, just know that. Usually she's a little more articulate in how she talks, but uh, she was, she was tongue-tied and flustered that day. Hi, Moose. at the riddle again, the moose crossing. Wait, I was so distracted by the cute moose. But that's where I needed to be. Where was that? There's Vesper. Well, that was a very nice clue. This is a huge sign. Okay. I stopped looking for the sign. As any smart husband knows, sometimes it's better to let your wife win these things. We've been here for like 20 minutes now. I'm just gonna stand under Spring City and see what comes to me. Okay, Spring City. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, I just saw it holding this. I was gonna say it's not behind it. It's over there. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. You found it. That I was, found it. It's incredible. Good job. That's really nice. I think one of their uh, subscribers made that for them. It's really cool. Well, if you ever come to the Sign Forest, sorry, you don't have anything to look for for us, but uh, come check out Keeper Daydream sign right here under Spring City. The drive from uh, this side forest in Watson Lake over to Whitehorse has been great too. Not as crazy as the Rocky Mountain day, but still kind of mountain. We saw snow too through the mountains. Really pretty here. So that was it. That sign. That's the big moment of truth and the decision to go the top of the world highway or not and come through the Haines Junction and Destruction Bay. For us, without a doubt, our main goal is just to get to Alaska. We don't care about like the crazy roads or whatever. I mean, if there was like another BAMF up there or something, we would go see it, but we're not trying to drag this out any longer or see how crappy the roads can get. That is very, very low point for us. So, yep, if it says Fairbanks this way, we are going this way. And like I said earlier, this is way more scenic than I was anticipating. How? Beautiful up here. Well put. <laughs> well, I kind of thought it was going to be like really boring. there look how big that one is look at that thing like right to the left of the yeah. oh, oh my god those people those people do not know um these people have obviously not been to Yellowstone and don't know about bison safety oh my god go back to your car oh no they're not cows Oh my god. Is that an iPad? I knew it. To finish a great day we have this awesome boondocking spot next to a lake we made it all the way to destruction bay from Watson Lake was not expecting that to happen champion right here nice job I think that was nine hours of driving but we really didn't stop for very long today we even did our first mid drive drivers change which this isn't the safest thing in the world, but if you're going to go pro at driving an A-Class, you got to do it. Swap it up, potty, back in the driver's seat, go, go, go. These are the things that you can do in the Yukon. All right, how about a nighttime beach walk? Pepper needs to go to the beach. Also, since it's 7.30, we could have lunch now, maybe. It's 25 after 11 and I know we've all seen people on TV or whatever who've gone up to Alaska or I mean even further north uh, in Alaska where it's 24 hours of daylight. It's absolutely insane to be out at 20 after 11 and it's this bright and I know it's 
probably a little pixelated because it's on my uh, iPhone camera, but just you can go outside and see perfectly fine. Uh, it's really, really screwing up our sleep schedule. <laughs> I love it though, it's great. <laughs> joking around. We're coming up on another border crossing. <laughs> so we're preparing ourselves. I'll take care of this. And I'm gonna take some notes so that we're fully prepared to answer questions and get back into our native country. We've been in Canada for 17 days. We entered at, what is that place called? Sweetgrass. We have seven beers. That whiskey's gone, right? Yeah, oh yeah. One lemon. This is, we're going back into the U.S. They're I not, don't care. They're not gonna like be like, you can't come back. Really? Because it seems like border crossings are more like a job interview. These guys are gonna be excited. Or they're gonna be like, we need to inspect your vehicle. That's fine. We're okay. We have dog food. For us, for me at least. It's not like, woo, native Alaska. I'm like, well, let's see if we get in here. Maybe we'll sit out here for what? two weeks now. No way. They're gonna probably throw me a ticker tape parade. This is kind of crazy going through a border crossing to come back into our own country, but this is the destination and it's so different from the lower 48. We've gone through many, so many border crossings, not on this trip, but you know, you're always going to something new. Alaska is something so, so new for us. It's just crazy that as a U.S. citizen to come through this border, it's gonna be like, welcome home, even though it's Alaska. There is no other country on earth that has so much diversity in topography. So it's really neat to be able to go to places like Alaska or Hawaii or Florida or Maine, and there's just so much Utah. that you get to. <laughs> what is it? Utah. Where? Utah. That's a lot of uh, different things you get to experience all within one country. So even if you don't have a passport, just uh, make sure you get out and explore the U.S. And then also get a passport so you can explore other places too. Shout out to T-Mobile. Oh yeah. So often trashed in the U.S. is not that great. T-Mobile saved our butts in Northern Canada. We haven't seen our good old friends AT&T slash Rogers in a long time. Since we got north of Banff, we've only had T-Mobile, which is on the Bell Network up here. And just, when we get into towns at least, just screaming fast internet. But uh, AT&T, where yet? Not in Northern Canada. AT&T on our main phones has said no service. It hasn't just been like slow or anything. It has said no service since we left BAM. T-Mobile, even when we come through just little tiny places with like one little gas station, it'll pop on for like three bars of LTE for a minute and then we're good. What would we have done without T-Mobile? I just, we would have been stranded. The strategy of having, instead of like all our eggs in one basket. Oh, this is the border. Yeah, AT&T and T-Mobile worked out. Wait, are we ready? What are you talking about? Is this the border? Well, what else is, this is the border. Oh, it's an airport. This is totally the border. Okay, we must be leaving Canada. Bye, Canada. See ya. We have an ulcer. Okay, I have Pepper's rabies vaccine. I have a list of things that we have in the car. We both have our passports. Wait, it said U.S. Customs 30 meters and we're not. Did we miss it? Was it that built? Did you have to go in? No, it's still. 30 miles? Maybe it's 30 miles. This is just no man's land. We're not in the U.S. yet. Where are we? No one knows. Da da and bo da and la 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 and bo 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 and do do da and bo da and then here we go and this way and bo 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 and la la la. We made it back into the U.S. I guess whatever. That was another crappy border experience. It was like we were waiting for the light to turn green and it didn't and it was kind of like flashing between green and red so like Tim stopped plus we didn't know if we were too tall for the thing and then the guy who has, is having a terrible day like steps out of the booth and he's like 
We're like, okay, well, it says stop. So, and then he's like, where are you coming from? And we're like, Canada? <laughs> maybe I'm so nervous about these because Tim always has like absolutely the worst answer to all the questions. He's like, Canada? <laughs> well, it's a stupid question. I don't know. What? Where I slept last night with like my port of entry. I don't know. There was a gravel turnout about 470 kilometers back. Do you mean the last time we got gas where there was cell signal? He's like, what? Where was the beginning of your trip? Like, I don't know, freaking Florida? Like what? When when did we? Where did we enter Canada? Uh, when was the last time we were in the states? How long were we in Canada? I don't know. Those would be like more appropriate questions. I mean, no wonder I have anxiety on these things. It's like. Just yeah, you, the worst experience. You are setting the tone. On this uh, life. I'm setting the tone because I feel like I have to pull the weight. You laughed and you're like Canada. I are you should laugh. It's such it was a, a stupid question. Just because he's a border guard. Well, the last time that happened, we spent two weeks in northern Montana. Do you have a putt on board? Yes. Didn't care like the species. Well, I don't know. Yes, our our pet alligator is in the back. Our <laughs> pet doopy. Oh, someone's getting pulled over already. Well, I'll welcome back to that. USA. Why ride the Dalton? Before doing it myself, all I'd heard is that it's overrated, only the first half of the 414 mile ride is even scenic, and bad road conditions can make the trip a grueling mess. On top of that, the road's desolate, except for truckers who aren't exactly excited to be sharing the road with yet another idiot on a bike. Sign me up. I went in this ride relatively unprepared and very much underdressed. Like playing a video game on a hard mode. To up the ante even more, the motor rental place suggested four days for the ride. I insisted I could do it in three. So here we are at the very beginning of things, paying over $1,000 for a rental to spend the next three days being pretty miserable. It was time to prove if I wasn't going to be smart about this, I was at least going to have to be tough. When you're doing something as serious as the Dalton, you want specialty equipment. For example, snowboarding pants. Nobody's going to be impressed by a lift ticket from last year. This is actually the start of the road. And in the past hour since I first checked in, I've learned one very important lesson. This helmet is gonna be really uncomfortable. Like, check this out. This isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. I didn't know there was gonna be a pretty sign just down the way. I thought that was the only sign. Before we get properly started and into this thing, I thought I should grab a few seconds here. First thing, prep for this. Really decided last night that I was gonna do this today. I imagine there's a lot of people out there who prepare for this for weeks and have a great like list of everything they wanna pack, everything they wanna do. This was as simple as getting the motorcycle and just throwing stuff into the boxes on it and whatever didn't fit in there, strap it on top. So I don't have an awesome meal plan. I do have an entire bin right there full of a lot of candy bars and nuts. I lucked out that they had a jacket that I could use for this drive. That is awesome. This is my first time on a BMW bike. I've been really excited to try riding a GS for a really long time. It's got 22,000 miles on it, and I'm sure most of those are Dalton. It's been running really good, and I think it'll be pretty comfortable. <laughs> I don't know what would be really comfortable for this long of an upcoming drive, though. The plan for today. I have to drive up to the Yukon River. There is a little spot there called the Yukon River Crossing, and I'm getting gas there. 
Uh, I'm getting gas because then the next spot to get gas is at Coldfoot. I hope to have a nice little dinner up at Coldfoot and get gas there. And then I am going to head north to the south side of the pass near the Brooks Mountains. I, I should really know all this stuff by heart. I don't. I did buy some bear spray before I left today. I don't know if that's going to do anything if I really need it, but it, I guess it makes me feel better. I'm all high spirits now and could not be more excited to be doing this. I have an awesome wife. She was nothing but supportive of this whole thing. She didn't understand it, but she's like, I get it, want to do it, go. This is Yukon Crossing here and the first stop for gas. The owners of the rental company said that I would have to be careful with the throttle, not be a throttle jockey, go easy on it, because I was going to be needing every bit of gas to get between, well, Yukon up to Coldfoot and then Coldfoot to Dead Horse. And actually, if I haven't mentioned already, I do have two extra gallons of gas and I'll need those to get from Coldfoot up to Dead Horse. I don't know what the hell happened immediately after leaving the Yukon River stop there. The road went from something I was going like 65 on the gravel to just this muddy, slippery. I'm having a problem in first gear going 10 on the, it's just, I. I... Well, Finny. I made it to that stupid sign I wanted to go to. And you were really smart for not wanting to do this. All of a sudden, since hitting like right near the Arctic Circle, the mosquitoes are coming out now. A quick time out for useful information too. If you want to drive up here, definitely get a rental car that is supposed to be on the road. We've seen YouTube videos where people drive their RVs up here. Unless you have like a truck camper, I won't drive an RV up here. The road is great and then all of a sudden just it's like the end of the world and it just the greatness stops and then it's just super rough. The potholes are epic. They give Chicago a run for their money. But it wouldn't be a problem to get up here at all in a truck or small SUV. I would bring extra an extra tire though. <laughs> this is beautiful cold foot behind me. This field, my home for tonight. And somehow it ended up being freezing so there's no bugs, but I'm gonna have to deal with uh, sleeping in the tent. I did not pack wisely for this trip either. Hello and welcome to a very special segment of a show I like to call Let's Try Not to Freeze and my buddy uh, Jim right here. Here's my woefully inadequate <laughs> uh, sleeping bag. By the way, please notice you can still see me okay. Obviously it was a little better with the lighting before, but it is 10 to midnight. Still this bright outside. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get back to hanging out with Jim. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I survived. I did it. The biggest problem here was the noise from the trucks rolling in and out of here all the time. Uh, it was also really cold. <laughs> but I took uh, hand warmers and stuck them in my sock. And it was, it was cold. Time to get up and see what else Coldfoot has to offer me. Quick shout out, of course it was Finney's idea to pack these. 
I didn't think I'd need them. She just knows. Here's something that's tough about doing any of this. It's really hard to just stay in the moment all the time, knowing that I have to film all this stuff. I'm nice and warm for breakfast. I had a bunch of coffee. I know it's time to drone, but that means literally finding a place to pull over, uh, dealing with this luggage bag that's not that easy to open to begin with, taking the drone out, setting it all up, and even doing something like pulling out the camera. Who knows if the helmet is like muffling my voice or if the audio is bad or anything. <laughs> Every time you're just like driving for more than 10 minutes, all I can think about is like, should I set up for another shot? Should I get this? Did I get this? Do I need to do it again? Could it be better? Uh, kind of takes you out of the moment a little bit. But I know I'm not going to want to do this on the drive back if I make it to Dead Horse. So now's the time. Uh, I lost my, I lost the sleeping bag and the tent off the back of the scooter, <laughs> scooter, motorcycle. Um, I feel like an idiot right now. I still have my straps and everything so I can get back going here, but God, that just sucks. I drove pretty far back, like 15 minutes with another rider who was going by. I didn't see anything. I don't know what to do. They're just unreal. I feel like a spaceman right now that discovered the worst kind of alien. I can hear him hitting my helmet like raindrops on a roof. Plus I know for a fact that it's 46 degrees based on the thermometer. How are these bugs still up here? It's, it's so cold right now. It's got... <sighs> By far the MVP of this trip, the hand warmers on this thing. I don't think this would be possible today without the hand warmers. They are that good and that important to just the morale of this expedition. <sighs> the other thing is, I just put the fuel cell into the motorcycle, like this is it. I, <laughs> whatever way I go now, I have to like stick with it. I can't think about it again. Um, we're going to Dead Horse. This is it. I'm here. This is Dead Horse. I was too cold to even like record coming in from outside or just the Dead Horse camp sign outside. Like that last 45 minutes, I was just kind of in a trance, like trying to maintain focus, trying to stay safe. The roads were terrible and I am just chilled to the core. Um, <laughs> I'm almost out of jokes now. <laughs> just that last bit was brutal. Um, just gonna warm up now and then I'll give you a tour of a $219 <laughs> hotel room. Dead Horse Camp goes with a 1970s dorm room uh, decor style. I will be getting a roommate, possibly. I have my own light above my bed. 
there's places to uh, hang clothes. And that's it. That's the hotel room. <laughs> the bathrooms are down the hall. Plenty of hot water. Well, well worth the $219, though. I went from thinking that was a joke to just a static to uh, pay and get a room and be warm and just like, I can't believe what a beating I took on the road the past couple of days. Um, well, I still have any, any energy at all. Let's look real quick. This is the food Finn helped me pack for the, <laughs> that's still left over and I'm driving home tomorrow. <laughs> bars, bars, bars. Bunch of tuna and chickens. Ice, ice cream. God, I can't even talk right. Hey, there's our buddy Jim from the last night. A ceremonial Bud Light Lime for tomorrow to drink for my buddies. Um, a pound and a half of heavily salted cured meat. 17 pounds of walnuts to eat. More nuts. Some, <laughs> pretty much the only vegetable or fruit you can take with you that's not gonna fall apart on the bike. Besides that, for the last night here, it's make sure that everything is down by the radiator, drying for tomorrow so I'm not miserable, and then just charging a bunch of electronics. There's no keys for the doors here. It's on the honor system. When you close the door, that means nobody can come in. <laughs> well, you can lock it from the inside, but you don't have a key to your room. I'm like slap happy. I need to go to bed. I'm dying here. I just want to do this because I can't do it in the morning. But speaking of the morning, some petrol this morning. Once you're swiped in here. Well, aside from the fuel station here and those buildings, that's Dead Horse. It isn't Disneyland up here. Mickey wasn't here to greet me when I showed up and nobody's gonna be waving when I say goodbye. Um, I was gonna wait and record a voiceover later, but I mean, this is the feelings on this whole thing. I'm so glad I did this. I don't ever need to do this again. Glad I didn't turn back and go back to Coldfoot. It's just nice to have this checked off the list and uh, the Dalton, it wasn't, there weren't like explosions, there weren't scorpions jumping at me or bears trying to maul me. It's a hard road to drive, depending on conditions. Um, it's a test of endurance and this is really cheesy, but it's like one of those last wild hard things out there to really test yourself against. I know there's harder routes, longer routes, but I mean, this is something I'm not gonna forget doing. <laughs> but it's something I just will never need to go do again. I have likely a 14 hour drive home today. The last two days have taken me a lot longer to get here because I've been recording so I won't be recording on the way home unless something epic happens. But uh, it's time to hit the road. That's all I can say. Let's get at it. Hounds. This is Dead Horse. This is the end of the line. I have one last special treat for you guys today. This might be the only Bud Light Lime within 500 miles of here. This is all for you guys. Seven a.m. beer. <laughs> this is as north of the wall as it gets in the U.S. Winter is coming. It's going to be a lot of powder out there. Ow! 
I have never been more excited to be in a rainy, cold destination. <laughs> The drive into Valdez was stunningly beautiful. We've only been here for three hours and we've already had pad thai in the harbor and I'm sitting here in the front seat of the RV looking at a sea otter in our spot for the next four nights. Valdez is a beautiful port town nestled among fjords on Prince William Sound. You probably know it as the primary location affected by the Exxon Valdez oil tanker spill in the 80s. It was the perfect spot for us to hide out for a week between Tim's crazy Dalton adventure and the arrival of Tim's parents the following week in Anchorage. It was so nice to finally be next to the ocean. After being in an RV for months, driving through the center of North America, we finally reached the coast. This finally felt like the RV experience we had been looking for. We had all the comforts of home, as well as adventure and beautiful views right outside our door. Valdez is a very, very small town with only a few restaurants, a Best Western hotel, and loads of RV parks. Somehow, we managed to call the same day and get a spot right on the water at the Bear Paw RV Resort. We had to move spots due to availability after a few days in town, but there was not really a bad RV spot around. Everywhere you look, we are surrounded by mountains, waterfalls, and bald eagles. It was really nice here catching up on work. The fact that Valdez is one of the wettest places in North America meant we spent a lot of time inside. We didn't do much vlogging, hence the abnormal amount of voiceover in this episode, but we want to show what Valdez has to offer as it was one of our favorite places in the state. It's popular to take a day cruise out to the nearby Columbia Glacier. We opted out mostly because we were using this week to work and it was a little long to leave Pepper at home. We did love all of the other things in town. Our favorite was the Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery. Every year, this hatchery releases approximately 230 million pink salmon and 2 million coho salmon. So the fish later return to the hatchery by entering the facility using a fish ladder, which carry the fish from Prince William Sound uh, upstream. This process is known as ocean ranching and it occurs every year. The amount of fish here was just astounding. This, of course, made the entire area a popular destination for other wildlife. Just up the road at other river inlets is a popular place to spot our favorite animal right off the side of the road. There is only one road in and out of Valdez, so you definitely won't miss Bridal Veil Falls and the glacier right here on your way out. Unless, of course, you'll be riding the ferry on the Alaska Marine Highway, which can take you down to Southeast Alaska or up closer to Anchorage. wonderful week in Valdez, it was time to head back to Anchorage and get ready for Tim's parents to arrive. We also ended up meeting up with a couple who had found us through our New Zealand videos. Fortunately for us, they happen to be the owners of Double Shovel Cider Company in Anchorage and we're wonderful hosts for the evening. Step one in cider making, source local apples. At this time, Double Shovel isn't on Harvest Host yet, but there is one Harvest Host in Anchorage. We would definitely recommend checking that out because surprisingly enough, downtown Anchorage had the worst RV options we've seen the entire trip. 
But anyways, another big thanks to Galen and Morgan who made our visit to Anchorage very memorable, uh, or not, if you know what I mean. Circling in on our last days in central Alaska. What, what part of Alaska is this? You know, the, like Alaska part of Alaska. Today we venture to Seward, with two more people in tow. On our way back from Valdez, we swung through Anchorage to pick up my parents, and we got the opportunity to wait at probably the coolest airport cell phone pickup lot we've ever seen. Cool. <laughs> Seward lies in the Kenai Peninsula and should definitely be a stop on your Alaskan road trip. Even the drive here from the airport is listed as one of the most beautiful drives in the country. We have not yet found a more RV friendly city than Seward, Alaska, you know, however you say it. Ocean front, and there's all these RVs, like as far as the eye can see. It's fantastic here. For $40, you can park Oceanside with water and electric, or if you're more budget minded, you can still just dry camp. Same cruise ship view, $20. Great day exploring Seward for one day. Tomorrow is our big tour day, so it's an early night to bed. We're hoping for good weather. The main reason we're here is my number one Alaska bucket list item, kayaking to a glacier. We're heading out on a ferry to a remote island inside the Kenai Fjords National Park where our wilderness guides keep their kayaks. Already, just on the ferry ride, we were visited by sea otters, harbor seals, bald eagles, puffins, and we're surrounded by ice, glaciers, and lush, temperate rainforests. Yes, rainforests in Alaska. How do we know all this? Well, this is our wilderness guide, Norris. We booked a full day trip with Kayak Adventures Worldwide, and while we were sharing the ferry with other groups, it was just Norris and the four of us that were gonna be off exploring the glacier. Well, we were quite lucky with Norris. He was immediately on board for our shenanigans, so we just handed over the camera and said, okay, you're in charge of YouTube today. So, so what, we don't do the work anymore? No, we've outsourced everything. <laughs> someone like Norris to help you out. Step two, remove snacks from pocket, place on kayak. Step three, apply sea skirt, correct direction. It would be this way, not the other way where I began this Step segment. four, go to the top of the mountain and pee. <laughs> How are your legs? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So straighten them for me and like put them all the way down and then move them all the way to the left side.
Yes, it was cold, it was wet, but it was one of the most incredible places we have ever been. It was time to paddle back to Kayak Island and be picked up by the ferry. And with some time to kill, we decided to interview a wilderness expert on how to stay bear aware in the park. Hot off the press. Oh, I'm unzipping these. Hold on, let's put these pants back on. Okay. Hi, Allison. Allison, it's not that Tour guide, wait, tour guide is not the wrong, right word. Wilderness guide Norris, here to tell us about bear spray and bear harmonicas. Norris? In the past, I have seen that bear spray is not that that great. You know, you have to be in pretty ideal conditions to use this. So I've come up with the bear monica, which is a harmonica uh, for bears. So basically, when you are hiking, you can use your bear monica, um, pull it out whenever you'd like, and uh, make exceptional music while you're hiking. Um, this is huge because bears do not like that music and tend to stay away. Um, what so genres of music do bears most dislike? Uh, usually the R&B, rap, uh, kind of um, like Rolling Stones, on the harmonica. That, that type of thing. Um, they'll stay away from that, yeah. Okay. And then would you recommend taking harmonica lessons on a normal harmonica before using the bear harmonica? Absolutely. I start with a C and then progress to, you know, a more complicated F note, um, you know, the, that, yeah, you want to progress uh, in your <laughs> harmonica skills before you really get into the bear harmonica. Thanks so much, Norris, for your information Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Have a great one. <laughs> Wet, tired, hungry, and cold, we laughed on the way back, and we applauded Tim's parents, who hadn't hardly been with us for 24 hours before we threw them into one of the most challenging days of the trip. Mom, you survived today! Yes, only to be hurt another day. Do you think we should come back and do this again tomorrow? No, I sponsored by Kayak Adventures Worldwide, nor did we receive this trip for free. This was just a serendipitous day with a great guide and company. At the end of our trip, each participant selects an eco-friendly nonprofit to donate to. It was great. Out of all the guided adventures and tour companies we've taken throughout our travels, this was by far the best experience. We just hope you give them a look if you're visiting Alaska. Homer is known for being the end of the road. The five miles out into the ocean on the Homer Spit is the farthest west connective road goes in North America. After driving all the way to Alaska from Florida, we were beyond excited to arrive. Homer is a unique Alaskan town and has been called the cosmic hamlet by the sea and a sort of Key West in a parka. It's also the halibut fishing capital of the world where the limit is two fish, but halibut in these waters can weigh up to 400 pounds. We left in the early morning on a charter boat to head out far from shore, out to the deep shelves where the halibut like to hang. It wasn't long, however, before we realized just what the day was going to be like. Our captain rolled his eyes and let us know we were lucky he was out with us on opening day of moose hunting season. Maybe luck, along with $325 a person? Okay. The day began with six of us watching a very hands-off training on how to fish for halibut. If not, I'm gonna put your hand, your thumb on the spool. This gold lever is gonna go down. You can let it out pretty fast and you'll feel it hit bottom. There, this bottom. Click it up. You're gonna move it just a little bit forward of that mark. Just a little bit forward. And you're gonna reel up a little slack so you keep it so it stays bouncing against it. Okay. And that's it. That's bottom. And uh, off we went. 
wrong, I guess. Get it real faster, okay? All right. Get it All real right. faster. Okay. It's going through your head right now. Just making sure I follow all the instructions correctly. Real, Allison, real. <laughs> And then we had one, maybe. Oh, I see. Oh, I got, do I? I don't know. I know what's on here. No, what is, what is this? My weight, somebody else's weight. Oh, that's not a thing. It didn't feel like I had a thing. Oh, oh, did you guys have one? And it we had each one. other, I think. Let's cut it. All right. Do you want to talk about the snag situation today? Okay, so don't stand, don't go on starboard when the drift is to the left, because all your stuff gets just tangled up with everybody else's, <laughs> and you're just practicing with reeling. After five to twelve times catching each other's lines and dismantling tangles, the captain decided we should try our luck elsewhere. On the on the next thing. There's going to be subtitles on this whole thing because you can't hear anything oh. you're saying. We arrived to find the largest waves we've ever been out in. Fine. All right, let's go. Okay, here we are, okay? How tough are you? <laughs> How tough are you? How tough are you? Is it worth losing the camera over? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We've already lost one camera fishing. What's another? Oh my god, look at those waves too. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be kidding me. We're rolling. <laughs> oh, when you're in a rock and boat. Oh my god. You go, girl. Wait, wide leg position. <laughs> Is this the turducken? This is a turducken. This is a nice herring coming out the mouth of the salmon <laughs> with a very nice circle hook in place, hoping for a fish to go like this on a <laughs> Okay, what should I do? Just leave it? Get the gal. You guys want to get that one in the boat? You want to get that one in the boat? You want to keep that fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Exactly the woo, take a picture with your fish crowd. Off it went into the bin. But Debbie and I decided it called for a, a bit more celebrating. Pretty big fish, Tim. Okay. Scale. Scale. <laughs> so, like, what is that estimated weight? I have no idea. Well, this from, from here oh. to here is a fillet. From here to here is a fillet. You oh, flip no. it over, you get two more fillets about that size. Wow. Oh. So that's a best place. Well, I mean, oh, Tim, that's the biggest fish you've ever caught, right? Uh. Tim's new confidence after catching the only fish had him hard talking the rest of the boat. I think I lost him. No, that's just how small he is. Keep going. No, I think I lost him because... Do you think he's two or three pounds? Mm. I don't think he even has a tail. I think it might just be the head. That is the quintessential under. <laughs> I'm like I'm bringing it up. What emotions are you feeling? This disappointment. <laughs> Total disappointment. The only reason I caught that fish was my bait grabbed him. Oh. Oh. You got it? Nope, he broke no. off. Oops. There's eleven dollars. 
Not now, how do you feel? <laughs> oh. Okay, so it was a bit of a slow start to the day on the last day of the halibut fishing season. But by the end of it, Bob had another fish up in the boat, and even Tim caught a second one. We had the captain warmed up, we continued to enjoy the beautiful coastline on the sunniest day we had in Alaska, and looked forward to the 40 pounds of fish we were about to bring home. Nice job, Bob. <laughs> nice job. Bob. I'll tell you what, that's hard holding that rod doing that. Nope, there is no way. I can reel. Yeah, without falling in. On our way back to shore, we even got a quick hello from a passing by friend. Busy, busy, no time to rest. Coming straight back from halibut fishing, we need to, oh, where is it? What? Whoa, Tim. As I sit out here fanning, fanning the barbecue, Filipino stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think they turned out great, let's eat. That smells so good. We're cooking it so fast and then we need to go eat it and enjoy it and then all of our stuff is in the wash to dry because then we are going on the bear tour tomorrow. We were originally scheduled to go halibut fishing yesterday but it got pushed to today because the seas were... That's fine. That's why we scheduled several days here in case anything needed to get moved around. But that means that now we only have a few hours between halibut fishing today, enjoying our dinner of halibut, and then bear viewing tomorrow. It's a whirlwind. This is our final Alaska road trip episode. It worked out that we saved our favorite experience for last though, because today we booked a trip to Katmai National Park to check out the bears at Brooks Falls. The only way to get to Katmai Park is by boat or plane. Since our little scoot scoot doesn't fly, we booked a seaplane out of Homer for an incredible flight out to the park. Brooks Falls is going to push being bear aware to the limit, so let's just drive this already tired joke into the ground already. How not to be bear aware. Here, we find a social media obsessed tourist focused on selfies with her coffee, oblivious to mortal danger. Silly tourist, your bear spray is tucked away. You've invited certain death. Bear aware requires alertness, discipline, and a quick draw if you get in a pinch. So remember, stay alert, stay alive, stay bear aware. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. Bear spray is not allowed at Katmai National Park. We are there to observe the bears, not spray the bears. This is so bear aware. This is, you have to eat inside these fences. And then now we're leaving the safe fenced in picnic area to go be bear aware. What are we gonna do today? There's bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm edible. <laughs> For the record, I lost my shirt, so my dad let me his. I'm also better way. <laughs> okay, we're going from for sure safety in here. <laughs> Certain death. <out laughs> Certain <there>. death. <laughs> and this dog makes a difference. Don't touch that. <laughs> okay, I will lead you on the. Let's <laughs> just send Bob first. Seconds later. All right. 
bear viewing. Except for the bear is sleeping on the trail, so they've stopped this large group of people. And we're waiting for the bear's nap. But, I mean, can that be like hours? Oh, there's his head. fly over and they're saying, oh, this is separate and this is... Like Wait, get in a better so position. Turn it over. Just turn it over. Turn it over. Catch this. It's got a little hot there. After seeing a thousand pound grizzly only minutes after arriving, we knew our safety briefing was no joke. So as we went off in search of the cultural center, we followed instructions and were as noisy as possible. I know, really? like, like, it'd it'd be like, be like little bear, hair but come under. Up under yeah. Yeah. You know what, if we had the bear Monica, we wouldn't have to come up with all these things that we need to say all the time and just keep rambling. Hey, I, I understand the bear Monica better now. You just like, just oh, yeah. start playing. Absolutely. And then you're That's having a, a nice time. Bear wear. bear wear on the left. Right. See, this is bear where they lay down the right. right there. See in the nice sun, all matted down. Yes. I love that we're going for our own so tour. Bear. Hey, bear. <laughs> hey, bear. <laughs> Woo. We're coming around the mountain. Woo. Oh, this is great. It's so serious. There's bars on the window. This looks like this is where bears walk up from. Okay, I'm gonna, water. I'm gonna. Ooh, that was right. exhausting. I was, I was like, so high alert. Here's a. Uh, All right, we're safe. All so right, so they live down in the ground. Interesting. Okay, this is interesting. And spooky. Safely back from the cultural center, our next challenge was to cross the river. Park rangers patrol the bridge so that foot traffic doesn't interfere with bears swimming by in the water. Wait, with Bob? We're hearing across the bridge because there's this bear right over there. Oh, they say come back. Re-entry please. <laughs> I can see the water dripping off of him. crossing take two the goal of crossing the bridge is to follow the path over to Brooks Falls you know the famous Alaska photo of bears catching salmon in the waterfall that's where we're headed it's I guess about an hour to go a half mile we have entered the bear chamber the bear safe chamber I guess the bear, bear chamber would be out Oh my god, that's so legit. This is feeling more and more like Jurassic Park. I was just going to say that. You know you're bear aware when? You're telling everyone you're bear aware. Even the bears know we need business. Thank you to my father-in-law, who printed these out for all four of us to wear here today. And yeah, we're wearing them.
get up the waterfall and then we're on the viewing platform here it's like oh like everyone here is rooting for the salmon it's like yeah the bears are cool but like you go salmon also it is so warm great thank you weather we appreciate it i'm wearing long underwear pants and i have this is just all layers of clothing we've all shed it's way better way better than break from the crowd and the beating sun, we found a bear safe platform at the mouth of the river all to ourselves. this is the best thing that we've done. Can you see through the water in the camera? I hope that all the sick men right here. Hopefully you can also see the bear right here. This is the coolest thing that we have done. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Scenic flights, bears, national park entrances. I'm walking super fast because they yell at you if you don't because you have to be bear aware. So happy we were able to do this. Also, I should mention, we pay for the stuff that we do. I used to like, look at YouTube and think that people just got to do cool stuff for free because they make videos for the internet. No, no, we're, we're customers, but so worth it. Between the awesome seaplane flight, the falls, and our favorite apex predators, we couldn't have hoped for a better day out at Katmai. This was the ultimate way to wrap up six weeks in Alaska, vacation time with my parents, and getting to share this entire North American RV series with you guys. Can't wait to show you what we've got lined up next. Happy New Year! Next Sunday, make the journey back from Alaska with us and follow our adventure back across the U.S. to sell the RV.